would steal 30 bag lunches. I'll tell you who took those lunches. That damn Sasquatch. That's right, crazy Billy Madison lady. It was the Sasquatch. Take me out to the bunk, yeah. Take me out to the Welcome to Let's Get To, your tour of America through the lens of minor league baseball. Baseball from sea to shining sea. And now, the first pitch. Opening thoughts from James Christopher. Presented by BaseballMapper.com. And welcome to Let's Get To. I'm your host, James Christopher, and we're going to be back out to Spearfish, South Dakota in just a moment. Office space? No? The high-pitched receptionist? Look, if you haven't seen Office Space, go ahead and pause this episode and come back to it. Because when you come back, A, that joke will be funny, and B, you will have seen Office Space. Now, if you've been following the show, and I mean, you're watching, so you have... You know that we've kind of been everywhere this baseball season so far. We've been to Wyoming and Montana and Michigan, and we're going to go to Delaware, New York, Pennsylvania, everywhere. And sometimes the benefit of traveling so much means that sometimes somebody will say something stupid, something completely out of touch, and maybe, just maybe, I'll miss it. Unfortunately, the latest dumb thing that Rob Manfred said, I didn't miss. And I quote, look, I kind of reject the premise of the question that minor league players are not paid a living wage. Can you be any more dense? Can you be any more obtuse? Can you be any more out of touch? I assume he's a lawyer because he kind of has that spineless vibe. And I, I just assume that maybe he's like, eh. You can live on it. The quote stems from Congress taking a look at the antitrust exemption from Major League Baseball. Now, look, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an economist. I didn't play one on TV. So I don't actually know the ins and outs of how an antitrust lawsuit works. I don't even know what's better for the game necessarily. But I do know that it looked at how baseball was was functioning in 1922, so 100 years ago, and how it functions now. And the argument is that in 1922, it really wasn't an interstate commerce, whereas in 2022, it, it is because of TV money and all that fun stuff. Major League Baseball has constantly used the antitrust exemption to underpay minor leaguers. But the concern about this statement in a long list of dumb stuff he said, you know, or done, calling the World Series trophy a hunk of metal, um, saying you're going to not deal with the Atlanta Braves thing because, oh, it's a, a a local community issue, possible racist undertones, but you're going to let it go. Obviously, scapegoating one team in one of the major scandals. The list goes on and on and on. In many ways, this is the dumbest. And it also, I think, points out to a real problem that we're dealing with in this country, and that is the separation of rich and poor is getting wider and wider and wider. And when you start to see it get so wide, you really lose touch in what makes the country special, what makes it great. And if you look at your history, every single time that, that, that the separation of rich and poor has gotten so big that the poor just can't handle it anymore... That's how you get change in revolution and just act, ask the French when they were just cutting people's heads off. It's not a good situation. And all you have to do is read this quote and see how the very rich, how the elite actually think about the people that are below them in social standing. And it's gross. And honestly, baseball, it's the best game ever invented. It's a beautiful game. And baseball and its fans deserve much, much better. St. Louis team, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I want you to tell me the names of the fellas on the St. Louis I'm, team. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Do you know the fellas' names? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean, the fellas' Who's on first? first? The Let's the Get To Team of the Week. Who? The guy on first base. Who's Presented first? by the Baseball Bucket List Podcast. Me? I'm not asking you, I'm telling you, who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. 
And we are welcoming to the show at least the third or fourth time he's been on, Eric Schmidt, GM and owner of the Spearfish Sasquatch. Eric, I know you guys are out of camp. How's that going? Yeah, things are awesome. We got about 55, 5 to 11 year olds on the field behind me right now. So uh, the energy's high. How is that? I mean, one, how important is it that you guys do that kind of outreach? But also, I mean, do the kids think it's neat to sort of be on a, a, a more impressive field than maybe they're used to playing on in Little League? Yeah, for sure. From our perspective, you know, we want to get as many kids involved in baseball as young as possible and, and just get them excited about the sport. Uh, we all know the sport's getting a little older, so we're trying to inject it into our youth and, you know, give give these uh, young kids somebody to look up to and these college players we have and get them excited about it and get them to want to stay in it um, instead of maybe switching to something else further down the line. Um, it, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, don't switch to football because you'll get a concussion. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about the season. I mean, you guys are like – new league. It seems like it's running well. I mean, it seems like everything seems to be going good. How has it been for the beginning of y'all season, which I know you're about halfway through now. Yeah, we just uh, got into the second half here recently. Um, you know, there, there's been a few hiccups, if you will, over the first few weeks, but nothing unexpected and that we couldn't handle. Uh, but a learning process for all of us as we um, owners of these teams in this league, you know, we all run this league together. Uh, so there's a lot more talk between all of us, be like pretty much every night, there's a long text thread of what's <laughs> going on here, what's going on there. And sometimes it could be overwhelming. Uh, but at the same time, it's enlightening and we're all very eager to learn what's working for each other and, and what's not and, and how we can improve day to day. That seems to me like a great, idea for how the future of that league can go i mean you guys can actually make it fit you all have similar communities it does seem like it's better than having just sort of a third party dictating what you do yeah yeah for sure i mean definitely you know it, it can come with challenges if we're, we're button heads about something like two two organizations can do but for the most part we're all very like-minded and we all have the same goal and that's to provide baseball in our communities um and at the end of the day uh, we, we do all get along and, and root for each other to be successful and, um, you know, not having just that one person that's in charge of everything it is a breath of fresh air for all of us. Um, even though sometimes we'd all be like, well, let's let them decide this, uh, <laughs> instead of all of us having to like get together and think about it. But, um, but it's, it's been a rewarding experience so far. So Eric, what I know of you is you're very dedicated to this sport. You're dedicated to the Spearfish uh, Sasquatch team that you, again, own. You're we're, we're always engaging with each other year round, right? Like we've been planning this trip for almost two years. Right. Look at the schedule. I realize like you work for two months, for 12 months, for 10 months for a two month schedule. Does it just blow by? I mean, is it like a blink of an eye for you? Yeah. I mean, right after the season, it's like... Oof, like decompress a little bit, maybe work on my golf game a little <laughs> and, uh, and spend time with my family. I have a, a two year old and an eight week old. So, uh, this summer I haven't been, it's, it's been kind of brutal not being home as much as I'd like to, but after about a month of that, just kind of decompressing and, uh, getting back to normal life, if you will. Yeah. We, I mean, we hit it hard to get, prepare for the next season. It's, it's not something you could do overnight. It really is a year round job. Yeah. I, again, I think you guys do it well. Um, you know, I'm going to be making my first trip and I say first trip because I have a feeling I'll become a repeat visitor to the ballpark. What, what kind of a time do you want me to have? What do you want my experiences to be? Well, I, I always say that, you know, my goal is to have a fan's head on a swivel, not just like looking between the lines on the field. Like I want you to say, what's happening over here. What's happening over there. Um, so that, that's the goal every night is to, to keep you engaged, um, especially in between innings when, when there's stoppage in play. And I, I just want you to have a good time, enjoy a Squatch dog, a Sasquatch summer ale beer, and, and just, you know, hopefully it's great weather and, and beyond what we have here at the field, I want you to explore our region and our area and everything there is to do in the Black Hills. Um, it's just a special place. Yeah, I've already I've actually penciled out my days because I would be there for two games, as you know. And so 
I'm going to go see Devil's Tower because, of course, I'm a big Close Encounters fan. I mean, I'm I'm honestly ridiculously excited to get there. So, you know, looking ahead or when do you really start looking ahead to 2023? Yeah, so honestly, I already am. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> I'm taking notes all year. I'm talking with partners and potential advertisers <laughs> and, and thinking of, OK, what did we do this year that was good, but how can we make it better or what's something completely new that we've never explored before as far as a promotion or maybe it's an exhibition game or, or this or that. So really it never stops for me. Um, I'm always uh, thinking ahead. Uh, but really I would say that September ish is when, you know, I start, I'm in the office eight to five every day. Like that's, that's yeah. when I really go hard. Um, is when we get into September right after the Labor Day weekend. Wow, you are not kidding then. You really do hit it hard. And and I mean, again, I think it goes to the dedication that that I you can sense from you through every facet of the organization. All right, clear your head. You ready for this? All right. Let's do it. What is your go-to ballpark food? Uh, for me, it's a hot dog. <laughs> Absolutely, like a hot dog and, you know, if I'm not working a beer, for sure. Okay, Marvel or DC? I'm not a big comic guy in general, but uh, so I, I, I'm probably letting you down on this. I don't even really know what which one's what. Uh, <laughs> so that's a bust of a question for me right here. Yeah. Okay. What is the strangest thing you've ever seen at a ballpark? Oh, uh, man. I want to say strange, but what I really love is the, the beer cup snake at Wrigley Field with all the cups and it just gets massive and out of control. And then security guards are trying to break it up. And it's just, it's just hilarious to me. That's awesome. All right. Dogs or cats? Uh, dogs. I don't know a lot of baseball people that are in, that are really cat people. I think yeah, that's. I, yeah, I don't either. Um, just always been a dog person. Love bark in the park night. We do it every year. Yeah. All right. Outside of the, the Sasquatch, obviously, what is your favorite team brand in all of minor league baseball? Ooh, um, I really like the sod poodles. I, okay. I love that. Um, the disco turkeys, uh, and, um, uh, yeah. And, you know, and, and for college summer ball, the, the bananas, they just do a lot of things that are just phenomenal to watch. And I'm, I'm a fan. Oh yeah. They really have. I mean, it's to the point that people that I'm related to who don't know anything about baseball, like, have you heard of these bananas? And I was like, yeah, they, you should be listening to my show. They've been on. So then I make them feel guilty. Um, what is the first time baseball broke your heart? Um, probably, uh, being a Cubs fan in, in 2003, I, I I'm pretty sure it was the year, uh, the Bartman thing. Um, not, not Bartman specifically, but just being that close to getting to the world series. And that was the first time in my adult life that we were there and, and it didn't happen. And that, that was, that was tough. Yeah. Um, I felt bad for everybody because I, because I was a big Moises Alou fan because he had played in Houston for all those years and everybody loved him. So there was a lot of people even in Houston that were rooting for him to at least get to the world right. series. And then, yeah, I felt bad for everybody involved there. Um, all right. Star Wars or Indiana Jones? Uh, I would say Indiana Jones. Okay. Kevin Costner is a cowboy or ball player. Oh man. I, I love balls. I love Yellowstone. Uh, big fan. I've, I've been on that since the day it came out. Uh, but his baseball movies are just fantastic. And I could watch all of them over and over and over. All right. When you get to a new ballpark, where's the, where's your favorite spot to sit? Uh, I usually try to sit behind like the dugout of the team that I'm there to see. Uh, but if I go to a ballpark over and over, you'll find me, I, I walk around and then I'm just always sitting, checking out different spots for sure. I, I'm one of those people that I like to get there early if I can just check out the entire ballpark, scope it out for the next time I'm going to come and be like, okay, this is where I want to be. I absolutely love that. All right. Let's pretend that it's January in Spearfish, South Dakota, and you are craving some baseball. What is your go-to baseball movie? Um. Gosh, I, I love Sandlot as far as just something to watch. But uh, for love of the game is a bit. I'm a big fan of that one as well. Back to Costner. 
Uh, and uh, growing up in Iowa, Field of Dreams, is it just hits home. It does hit home. Eric, we cannot wait to get out there. Thanks so much for jumping on Let's Get To You. All right. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you here very soon. And welcome back to From the Bleachers. We're coming to you from the bleachers of Spearfish, South Dakota, home of your Spearfish Sasquatch. This has been very high on our bucket list for a really long time. We started having Eric on the show like a year and a half ago, so I'm glad that we're finally getting out here. Take a look at how our two games, that's right, we're staying here for tonight and tomorrow night for Christmas in July night. So take a look at how our two games went. Beautiful Spearfish, South Dakota. A paradise of blue skies, green trees, and baseball. The Spearfish Sasquatch have a game tonight. The summer breeze is blowing and that means that the front office and the players are working hard to get the field ready. I love that about this level of baseball where everyone has to work together to make the game happen. White clouds move along a bright blue sky and it's a perfect day for the greatest game ever invented. The Spearfish get after it at the Black Hills Power Sports Complex, an intimate facility in the Black Hills of Spearfish. There's something about a ballpark set in the middle of such natural beauty. And the Black Hills behind the outfield wall make for a perfect backdrop. The Sasquatch, or Squatch for short, have a great brand and color scheme and it permeates the entire park. They use this branding to help create a real identity. This is Spearfish's team in every sense of the word. And in Squatch territory, the fans come first. You see it with Samson the Sasquatch mascot. At the seventh inning stretch of every single game, the kids get to run the bases and he's out there leading them. He even takes the time to talk to random podcasters. So we're here with Samson the Sasquatch in South Dakota, home of your Spearfish Sasquatch. First question, obvious one. You've done so much effort to stay hidden. Why come out now for baseball? Fair enough. I mean, I love baseball too. Now, uh, other question that our fans want to know, are you related to, to Harry from Harry and the Hendersons? Like maybe like a college roommate situation? Well, you heard it here first, first folks. He likes baseball and he's related sort of tangentially to Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. Back to you, Jim. The players are also always part of the fun. Tonight, they were leading the YMCA in the crowd. And they did it the next night. And even Andrew got into the act. You've got players and owner Eric Schmidt throwing free stuff to the crowd. And I even saw a random player with a three-year-old on his shoulders that I'm pretty sure wasn't his kid, but the kid was having a blast. But this visit was special. Not only was Andrew able to make the drive over, but we were able to take in two games. And the second game was one of my favorite theme nights of all time. And in case I failed to mention it, it is Christmas in July. Yes, Christmas in July. It's one of my faves and I was dressed for the occasion. The only gift that could have made this night better would have been the opportunity to toss out the first pitch of the game on Christmas night, which I did. And this was one of my best ones yet. He definitely swung. First pitches and them having us on the radio just shows you how hospitable the team is to anyone who walks through their gates. And speaking of player fan engagement, two players agreeing to be wrapped in gift wrap was simply awesome. They stood there as kids wrapped them up into the perfect baseball playing presence. And honestly, they seemed to be enjoying the Yuletide stunt. It was fun to see folks decked out in Christmas gear, and how can it be Christmas in July without carols? I was rocking to All I Want for Christmas is You, and the players were in on it too. These guys, when they play summer league baseball, they build relationships, and some of them stay friends for a lifetime. Sometimes players stay involved with host families for the rest of their life. They go to their weddings, that sort of thing. And one of the things that really was cool to watch was a Sasquatch pitcher making his last departure from the bump 
and to see all the players come out of the dugout for high fives and to wish him well, it's again a reminder of what makes this game so special. The on-field product is great. This is some of the best collection of collegiate talent you'll see. It was fun to watch Nikki Winterstein, who we got to meet before the game, have a great couple of days in the plate. He even had that most rare of baseball occurrences, the stolen base. Seriously, I really do miss more stolen bases. When the sun goes down in a new ballpark, it's always bittersweet. The great time is over, and when the sun disappeared and the Black Hills faded from sight, this was particularly hard. Spending 10 hours at a park across two days meant that I was starting to feel like I was a part of Squatch Nation. So it was hard to say goodbye. What a magical time I had. I told Eric that this was one of the best ballpark experiences I've ever had. He didn't believe me, but I stand by that. And I think part of the reason why is that he didn't believe me, so he's always striving to improve the product. So it's been rumored that it's hard to find Sasquatch, hard to find Bigfoot, but these guys in Spearfish will stay on my radar for a long, long time. Swaller, a chug of ballpark brew, presented by the Hitter Sports. And sorry, all right, we're back here on Holler and a Swaller. Andrew Nelson is with me. Perfect. Yeah, live and in person. This segment presented by the Hitter Sports. All right, first time in uh, Sasquatch. By far, we're drinking the Spearfish Sasquatch Summer Ale from Crown Peak. Overall, what have you thought so far of the experience? Oh, it's been a great experience. It's a, it's a fun little ballpark. You're right, right close to the action. Um, everything's nicely organized and put together. Team's fun to watch. They get involved in the action on and off the field. It's, it's a great time. I do love that they had, like, they did the Christmas wrapping thing. This game, last game, it was the YMCA and having the players be involved. You don't see that very yeah, often. Yeah, absolutely. So, you're a big merch guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell the people that you texted me with hat choices before you left. <laughs> oh, I did that already. Overall, what do you think of the brand of the Sasquatch? Oh, it's it's a great brand. Um, the colors are really nice. They, they have that kind of baby blue with a dark blue and uh, and kind of silver accents, right? Yeah, silver accents. And they use a lot of black in there, too, which I yeah. dig. Yeah. Um, they have a couple of good logos. They have the, the uh, Sasquatch foot with the bat, cross bats. Yeah. And then the, the fierce Sasquatch head. It's, it, it looks like actually fierce, not like... Uh, uh, Brandios uh, fierce. Not, yeah, not like a Brandios uh, quote-unquote mad animal. Yeah. Um, so which, yeah have I, you I decided like which one you're going to get? I think I'm going to go with the fierce Sasquatch head. I have both. I'm a big fan. I do want to do a quick shout out to who I'm wearing. I'm wearing the O'Fallon Hoots. The reverse of this always messes me up. And I've got the Stockton Ports Christmas hat. Very nice. I'm really glad you made it out. This has been so much fun. Yeah, always a great time. All right, well, holler and a swaller. Let's get these babies open. ASMR. ASMR. And look at this. Holler and a swaller, baby. Refreshing. Ladies and gentlemen, please adjust your scorecards. We have a special guest in the lineup. Now, we had a great time at the Spearfish Sasquatch, as you'll see in the rest of this episode. And a big part of reason that was so much fun was due to Bailey Hubbard, our next guest, who is the in-game host <laughs> for the Sasquatch. Bailey, first of all, how's it going? Pretty good. Thank you for having me, Jim. I'm really excited to be doing this. Well, thanks for jumping on. And tell me a little bit about just how you went from someone who wasn't working in baseball to now being the in-game host and really working for an entire game, keeping people energized. Right. Well, it definitely was a huge jump um, just being kind of thrown into the situation. You know, um, my college doesn't have baseball. So even watching live baseball, that was, that was pretty cool to see, but um, yeah, I mean, I love it. I love just being on a baseball field in summer, the smell of the barbecue, the fans, everybody. And you know what? I have met some pretty amazing people doing this job, and I couldn't be more thankful. 
Yeah, I noticed because I know you're a student at Black Hills State University, right? Yes. And I went yes. to look for a baseball t-shirt because that's what I do. And I got a rodeo one instead because there was no, yep. no baseball. <laughs> how, how did you discover then the Sasquatch and in, in that they were hiring? Right. So fun fact, I actually, this is my first time ever getting involved with Sasquatch. I've never been to a game. I didn't know it was a thing until this summer. So one of my teammates, she was their graphic designer last year. And she knew that I loved baseball. I knew that I wanted to get into a career having something to do with baseball. And she was like, Bailey, you've got to do it. Like, you've got to talk to Eric, our manager, like, you're going to love this. And so got his information, we got to talking and here I am now. <laughs> Eric's uh, kind of one of the best in the business too. It's hard not to get fired up with that guy and wanting to work for him. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, He's very, very committed. <laughs> so you, you went into this knowing you wanted to somehow be involved with baseball. Has that gotten stronger yeah. or has it gotten like, Oh boy, that's a lot of work. Definitely stronger. Um, it was very overwhelming at first because I didn't realize how many different kinds of people I would be having to deal with because you have to make sure, you know, the, t the people on the team are in check and wanting to like do these fun in between any games. And then you have to make sure your volunteers are in check while also trying to like maintain the energy of the crowd. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been nothing but fun, honestly. Let's talk a little bit about um, the, 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 the team involvement because Right. You guys are one of the few teams that do that. And I think it's awesome to have, yeah. you know, like one night it was uh, leading the YMCA one night it was getting wrapped in, in wrapping paper. <laughs> and the thing that I noticed is the the, all the players you had up there, they seemed really game for that. Oh yeah. They, they have some of the best energy. I mean, all the fans are there watching the team, supporting the team and, I think it's really cool that the players can give back to them in that aspect by giving them that energy that they want. And honestly, who doesn't want to see like some, some 20 year old boys just messing around with the, with the crowd, you know what I mean? But yeah, they're the best. And I think when the players get involved, that's when the crowd gets super hyped up and has super high energy because I don't know, it's like small town family baseball and you can't ask for a better, better situation when the boys get involved. I think one of my favorite moments was seeing um, one of the players with a random two-year-old kid on his shoulders running around and everybody <sighs> seemed to be having a blast. It was pretty awesome to see. How do yeah. you keep your energy up? Cause I watched you for two games um, and immediately was, was drawn to how good you are at it. And I've seen this. Well, this thank you. <laughs> very welcome. I've seen teams not have one of what your role is. I've seen teams have one with no pulse and then, there's folks like you. How do you keep that energy up for? Because, like I said, I saw you do it for two ball games. Right. Well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that first and foremost. Because sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes it's a little draining. Like social battery just gets low. But honestly, Simon and Wyatt, like they're in the dugout with me. They're my other fellow interns, and they do a lot behind the scenes for like in between inning games and crowd involvement. And honestly, without them, like I probably wouldn't have the energy that I do. Like, and Honestly, even the fans that are coming in too, like they tell me, they're like, oh, like it's so good to see you again. Like we can't wait to see what you have in store today. And that really just kind of keeps me going. And it's like, all right, well, we got to put on a good show for them. You know what I mean? So you said, you, you, you know, you didn't, you hadn't worked in baseball till now, but I noticed that I didn't see a lot of repeat from game to game as far as what y'all were doing between innings. How right. much fun is that then planning that out and getting that sort of put on a schedule? And then you see a theme night and you think, oh, here's a bunch of other things we can do. Right. No, it's that's probably one of my favorite parts is having the different theme nights and having like all this um, all this room for creativity, because I really try to plan the games according to what the theme night is. And I'm like, OK, what, what's the crowd going to like best? Like, for example, tonight's game is 80s theme. So we're going to have like this little runway talent show of who has the best 80s costume. I missed 80s night. <laughs> you did. You got to come back out now. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, like, that's my jam. I mean, Christmas is my jam, too. But uh, <laughs> missing 80s night. You that were all decked out for Christmas night. I love that. <laughs> I the, the best part is, and, and you know what? Here's you're the only one who gets to know this. I actually had a fashion show with my wife because I have so many options. And that's what we settled on. Like. It was, I love that. <laughs> I don't know if she's questioning her life choices yet, but it was definitely fun. 
<laughs> there you go. You got see when people participate, that's the best thing we can ask for because it's like people are getting involved, people are having fun. It's the best time. I, I remember because it was hot when we were out there. Oh, and there yeah. was a guy wearing a thick Christmas sweater, and I kept walking by mm-hmm. him, and like, dude, you are you are the real hero. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, where are you in your education? Like, what year are you? I'm going into my senior year, so this will be it for me. <laughs> and so what what do you see down the road then? Do you see yourself like maybe hitting up the winter meetings and trying to get into affiliated ball? Do you see yourself, is this the, the track you want to be on? And where do you see the end goal for you? Right. So end goal, dream goal, ESPN. <laughs> but I know there's going to be a lot of steps in order to get to that end dream goal. Um, But honestly, I love journalism and I love reporting. So I think the more experience that I get with Sasquatch and maybe even other sports teams, um, the more people I meet and connect with, that'll just set me up for, you know, like it's like a ladder, like you have to meet this person and then do this thing and then just got to like build your way up. I love the fact that you acknowledge that it's a ladder because when I was in film school, I thought, well, no, it's a total meritocracy and my movie will be great and people will know. That's not what happened. Um, <laughs> but overall, first season in, I mean, is it just smart decision to do it? Yes. Yes. I'm definitely, I'm learning a lot while having fun. And that is, you can't ask for more. <laughs> I think, and I, I really look, I think, you know, whatever path you end up with, they're going to be lucky to have you. I think there's an energy a positivity that I immediately latched onto. So it was, it's really cool that you, want to stay in this sport because we need more of that. But now it's time to empty your head. You ready? Yes. Yes. All right. (laughs) And this is going to be fun because you're new to baseball as far as working in it. So this is going to be good. Yeah. Um, What is your go-to ballpark food? Ooh, pretzel with cheese and a little bit of salt. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, This is actually kind of a weird, weird, um, like food craving, I guess, but sometimes I'll dip my pretzel pretzel and mustard instead of nacho cheese. And some people think it's really gross, but it's actually really good. No, that's how we do it down here. We do mustard more than we, yeah, yeah. Yo, it was like, yeah, sometimes you'll get a pretzel with three choices of mustard. Now that's pretty, yeah, you get like, we're doing it wrong up here. (laughs) Yeah, maybe. Um, all right. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Okay. So you've been at a ballpark now for almost a complete season. What is the strangest thing you've seen at a ballpark? Oh my gosh. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about this one. I don't think I've seen anything too, too strange at this ballpark. I think the weirdest like outfit I've seen was on christmas night and there was a ugly or i don't want to call it ugly sweater fabulous christmas, christmas sweater, sweater and what it, i call them yeah fabulous christmas sweater yeah and i don't know if it was like they made it themselves had it custom made or just found it but it was a sasquatch and he had like it was like a christmas tree like he had lights i was like this is this is perfect this is perfect <laughs> that's <laughs> really amazing all right dogs are yeah dogs for sure I don't know a lot of baseball people that are into cats. It's been like, I'm doing an unscientific study with this. Uh, My good friends at the Omaha storm chasers, they did have take me out to the ball game where you could bring your cat. And I really wish I could have been there to watch them. actually hurt cats. Yeah. I feel like that would be interesting. That would, I don't know how cats would do in a ballpark. (laughs) I don't think, I don't think too good. Um, All right. So you've now seen a bunch of brands come through, um, the ballpark outside of the spearfish, who do you think is a really good brand in y'all's league? Let's see. I would have to say I'm, I'm a big sunglass girl. Like even when I play softball, I'm wearing sunglasses. Um, I forgot the brand's name, but I've seen multiple, multiple players wear these. And even some of our interns have them. There are these sunglasses. They are like are super big, and they have like a hundred percent on the side. Yeah, I they forgot used, the brand name, but they look like the old school razor blades from when I was in. Yes, they yeah. do. They do. Okay. I just think they look. They like put the whole ensemble together. You know, like you got your hat, you know, your uniform, and then you got to have the sunglasses to make it. You know. Absolutely. Um, okay, <laughs> Star Wars or Harry Potter? 
Harry Potter. I grew up on Harry Potter. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell my mom though. She's a huge Star Wars fan. <laughs> I well, hopefully she's gonna watch this and then you'll be hopefully. you'll be outed. Okay, what is your favorite spot <laughs> to sit in a new ballpark? Right behind home plate. Okay. All right. So what is your go-to baseball movie? I don't know if it's technically a baseball movie, but League of Their Own. Oh I no, League of, a League of Their Own is a top five baseball movie. Okay. Period. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, there's. I know. I know many people who put it as their number one. So, um, yeah. Last question, and it's something I noticed at the game, and it kind of got me thinking about the level of baseball that y'all are in because you're not going to see like if you come back next year, you're not going to see the majority of these guys. And there was a moment at the game, right where a pitcher was taken out for the last time. He was going back to school, oh. hugs and high fives. How, how has that been? Has you start to say goodbye to players and are there, how do you feel like it's going to be at the end of the season when you're going to now have what we on this show call the void? Right. It's, it's, it's hard. Um, so the pitcher, I didn't know personally, but it's, really cool to see the connections that these players have made with each other so fast because they have multiple players coming in from like schools all around and the way that they have connected so fast is like it, it's insane like these are all brothers and you can tell that on and off the field like they're always hanging out like the chirping in the dugout like the funny stuff they say it's it's honestly pretty cool to be in there with them but yeah I mean Honestly, on the field, the way that they've connected with each other is really inspiring to see because, I mean, for softball, we get new people in every single year. And so it's cool to see a whole team do it. And then it gives me like, oh, well, I can't wait for my season. You know what I mean? But no, it's really cool to see them kind of wave them goodbye off the field. And like, you know, they're always going to have that connection. Or like when Johnny McHenry, when he signed with the Nationals, like, all those boys were so happy for him. And I think those are one of the most important relationships you're going to make in your life. And then we'll wrap it up then with a question about softball. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously it's, it's the same as any sport where you are going to be, you know, you really, you bleed, you sweat, you form a bond yeah. um, and you're coming on your senior year. Like, have you started to already think about what that's going to be like next spring? Yeah, a little bit. I'm trying, I'm trying to slow it down as much as possible, but you know, I, this is my last chance to play softball and I'm really just going to try and enjoy the most of it with, you know, some of my best friends ever, like the people that you meet in college and your teammates, you spend almost every single day with them mornings, practice every day. And so I think you really just got to appreciate the moment that you're in and just have fun, like win or lose, just have fun. I don't, I don't think there's a better way to end the interview. She's Bailey Hubbard from the Spearfish Sasquatch. Thanks a for being on the show, but really thanks for just bringing all that energy. You were definitely a highlight for Andrew and I at the game. Well, thank you so much, Jim. I really appreciate it. And reaching out to get on this podcast. This is so awesome. <laughs> Show me the merch, fashion, baseball style. Presented by the Baseball by Design podcast. And welcome back here to Show Me the Merch. Now, if you follow minor league baseball and if you're watching this show, you do. Otherwise, what are you doing here? There's things on YouTube to watch. You know that the Spearfish Sasquatch have one of the best brands in all of baseball. One of the things you need in today's minor league baseball landscape is a brand that will stop people from scrolling through Twitter. And the Spearfish Local 9 have that in spades. Think about it like having a really great album cover. That way when you go to Sam Goody and you're flipping through CDs, I just realized that most people listening to this might not know what Sam Goody is. The Sasquatch icon immediately grabs your attention. It looks like a beast you might find in the Black Hills, one that it's hard to take a picture of. He honestly looks legit scary as opposed to some of that fake scary we get with other team's logos. In the other logos the Sasquatch have, for example, the claw gripping the baseball and the footprint round out a great set. The other eye-catching thing is the color scheme. The blue and black layout is a favorite in one of the other things that really pops about the brand. 
So take a great design with great colors and it adds up to a really cool set of minor league baseball merch. So again, check out everything you can get for the Spearfish Sasquatch. Get it online, but even better, get out to the ballpark, get it yourself. But whatever you do, get it directly from the Spearfish Sasquatch. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. The seventh inning stretch. What's going on outside of the ballpark? Presented by the Dad Hat Chronicles. Well, we're excited to welcome to the show Misty Caldwell from Visit Spearfish, uh, my first trip to South Dakota. I'm so excited. Misty, first of all, how's it going? It's a fabulous day in South Dakota. I can't complain. Is it a, we, I like to call them Chamber of Commerce Day. It's the kind of day when you're like, come set up a business here because this is what it's like all the time. <laughs> right. We like to have at least one of those every month. So we uh, try to plan those out annually. But uh you know, some months have their mind of their own. So, <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, you know, we're excited about making our trip to South Dakota. We're, it's been on our bucket list for a long time. We're really good friends with the folks that run the Sasquatch out there. But one of the things that I was interested in is what else I should do or what else one of my fans should do when they make their trip to Spearfish. Absolutely. Um, well, Spearfish is a very unique community in that we're one of a handful that has um, – things to do year round. Every day of the year, there's something to do. In the summer, of course, it goes without saying, it's a fabulous place to be like every vacation destination. Fall, uh, hands down, is probably my favorite season. It revels uh, the leaf changing of the East Coast. I mean, it's just got some fabulous things. Winter recreation, snowmobiling, snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, fat biking, a big deal here. Um, so yep. those things as well. Uh, so yeah, we're an outdoor destination in general, but also have a community that provides something for everyone, arts, um, athletics, all of the like. So yeah, it's a great place to be. And one of the things I noticed too, when I was doing my, my sort of digital recon was it's also driving distance, things like Devil's Tower and, and Absolutely. all these other sort of national park situations. Yes. So we're about an hour and 10 minutes from Devil's Tower and just about an hour and 20 from uh, Mount Rushmore. Uh, you know, Black Hills are a beautiful place to visit because they're only 90 miles north to south and 60 miles west to east. You know, so if you hub and spearfish, you're literally, you know, the furthest away is about an hour and a half. Um, but everything else is, you know, an hour or so away and you can catch it all. So, yeah. Um, before we talk about like local food stuff, which is something I'm very interested in. Um, that's why I'm sitting down so you can't see the rest of me. But um, <laughs> um, how important is the ballpark and the ball and having a team there to kind of help support the culture of spearfish? Um, well, I am super biased because I have a collegiate softball player. Um, and my husband was a national champion fast pitch softball player. So you're speaking the language to me. When this came up, we were part of the group that spoke about um, getting uh, the league here in 2017. And so what that does is not only um, brings excitement about the sport, but a couple of things have happened since then. You know, Spearfish is a great, great outdoor recreation place, great arts community. Um, but for those family evening event things in the summer, right, we want to spend time outside. And a Sasquatch game is far more than a baseball game. Now, I love bat and ball sports more than most <laughs> would, yeah. as a matter of fact. Um, but, uh, you know, Samson, the Sasquatch, does things between innings. Um, it's a great opportunity for young communication majors to get out there and host the things. And so they're really into it. Great food, um, great beverages. And I would tell you, um, of my 51 years on Earth, uh, 45 of them here, Spearfish was never allowed to have fireworks, commercial grade fireworks. We were too close to the National Forest. Okay. They've um, done a tremendous amount of work um, to ensure that that can happen now. Uh, and so we having fireworks and spearfish, I mean, that is Americana, right? Baseball, yeah. fireworks, and it is a great family event. And it's a great corporate event, too. They have a VIP um, section where you can rent that out and do some celebrations. So um, it is that ballpark park has brought evening entertainment of the family nature um, to a higher level in Spearfish for sure. So let's talk about what else to do when we're there. Um, and one of the things I'm really interested in is the food scene. So, you know, no, no offense to Chili's or Applebee's, but I like to eat local when I'm out. So what is, what is some of the, what the food scene has to offer? 
Uh, you're in the right place. We're a university town. So the expectations for food and beverage um, are pretty high. Um, we are a, um, Spearfish was actually incorporated as the agricultural community uh, that served the miners in the gold rush days up in Deadwood. And so we have rich agricultural land that now is used more as hobby farms, commercial, small farms. So a lot of farm to fork. Hate to use the buzzword, but truly it is a great, a great experience here. Uh, we have 60 plus eateries, 10 coffee shops, and three breweries for a town of 15,000. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so you won't be short on things to eat um, from the farmhouse bistro uh, to steerfish steak and smoke. Uh, Killian's is the place where everybody goes for great burgers. And it's like the, it is like the pulse of the community. Uh, dough trader pizza. They make their own sourdough, gluten-free um, fresh vegetables, fresh everything. Um, Leon's Creamery, uh, homemade small batch ice cream. Whoa. I, mean, I could go on and on. We have, you know, great the coffee culture. We have two, um, two corporate coffees, which are great in themselves and you know um, what to expect. And they're great community partners, eight locally owned um, deli style coffee shops, um, two of which roast their own beans. Um, yeah, I, I could go on and on. Um, and Tunia's cuisine is probably one of the most unique uh, in the sense of like a Spanish fusion cuisine, a little, they only seat about 40 in their very intimate setting. Um, if you like the Qdoba Chipotle type of um, food, we have homegrown, uh, we do have Qdoba, fabulous. We also have barbacoas, which is um, a oh. low sourced, um, same kind of that short order, um, but they have fresh vegetables and soups. And yeah, so I could spend an entire show with <laughs> an hour and I'm a super foodie. So um, well, Italian grandma from New York who brought an Italian restaurant called Nona's to town. So give me about five days. And I okay. <laughs> well, but let's speak to that as how important is it? You're a foodie. Um, how important is it to have local food again, to sort of keep the culture of the community alive? It, it's probably, when people say, what are your biggest um, attractions in town? Truthfully, Spearfish Canyon goes without saying. I mean, it's the Grand Canyon of the Midwest, right? Um, and it's fabulous. Uh, we have great attractions, but people will drive our local towns, you know, towns larger than us. Um, and, you know, we're so close to eastern Wyoming, you know, southeast Montana, western North Dakota. People make this their stop. Um, for food. I mean, it truly is three fabulous breweries. I mean, they're one of the oldest in South Dakota, Crow Peak, um, Sawyer Brewing, Brick Oven Pizza with it, and Spear Brew is like the contemporary cool place downtown. Um, it, it is, I would tell you, it, it revels other attractions in town. It's why people come here. Well, we are super excited to get there ourselves. Uh, she's Misty Caldwell. Thank you so much for jumping on Let's Get To and talking a little spearfish. Thank you, and uh, come look us up when you get to town. We look forward to hosting you. And now on to close it out, the right-hander from Houston, Texas, James Christopher. So that does wrap up this episode of Let's Get To. We've had a great two days out here at the Spearfish Sasquatch. Thank you to Eric and to Bailey and all of the team for really making us feel welcome. One of the things that I noticed and I was talking to Andrew about in the game is this seems like not only the ballpark that fans like to come to, but for the kind of organization that the players want to play in. And for Collegiate Summer League, that's super important. So, again, thank you for making us a part of that for the next two days. Remember, guys, you only have about two months left of minor league baseball. Get out to your local team. Get you some peanuts. Get you some Cracker Jack. But most importantly, no matter what you do, no matter how much he cries, no matter how much he begs, let's get to. Ah. Let's Get To is presented by Twitchy Dolphin Media. Creative Director, Jessica Bybee Jedgetts. Executive Producers James Christopher, Andy Tom Chesson, and Scott McIntyre. Produced by Andrew Nelson and Eric Mertens. Associate Producers Timothy Jedgetts and Jess Canaster. Music by Andy Bertelson, Grace Usselman, and On Holiday. All content created by Let's Get To is the sole property of Twitchy Dolphin Media. All content created by teams covered in the episode are the sole property of the trademark holders. 
Let's Get To is a proud member of the Curved Brim Media Network. This podcast is part of the Curved Brim Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brim Media. Hi, I'm James Christopher, host of Let's Get To, and we are going to be taking you on a tour of this great country through the lens of minor league baseball. That's right, from sea to shining sea, we're going to be looking at towns big and small as we explore the greatest game ever invented. This is Patrick. And Corey. Oh, BaseballMapper.com. And we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball, so get on the site and find a team near you today. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna Tommaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series. And in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. And I'm Paul Caputo. I tell the story of America, one minor league baseball logo and nickname at a time on the Baseball by Design podcast. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at curvebrimmedia.com.